Hello. What's going on, folks? Hmm. Can everybody hear me? Everybody see me? Anyway. Um, what's happening, everybody? going on is it working somebody let me know it's working it seems there's an error on my end uh, I can't see the playback that I normally can so that's kind of bizarre but uh, looks like it's working I guess why do I seem why do I seem so dark today huh. I don't know anyway Hello, how's it going? All right, I guess we're good. I guess we're good. I guess we're good. So uh, I'm going to try to do something a little different today, kind of a close-up of a rhino's head. I figure uh, I was looking through some photos of a rhino, and there was a lot of good, like, portrait, head portraits like this. So I was like, all right, it might be cool to give this a shot. So just going to start off by trying to figure out how big I want it. I don't want to go really big. I want to keep it kind of medium size on the paper here because otherwise I'll be drawing this forever. So... So I always get a lot of questions about like proportions. How do you figure out proportions? Um, you know, I made videos on it already, but I'll still, I'll try to explain it a little bit here. Right now I'm just eyeing it up. I'm just judging it basically. I'm just using my judgment. And I think that's a good thing to get used to and try to try to do because um, you're kind of training, you're, you're training a muscle like your eye, hand, hand eye coordination, your judgment. Thanks everybody. I'm glad you could see me. Wanted to make sure before I started getting into this that everything is working. I can't see my playback. Normally I can see if it's going, but it says an error occurred. So that's unfortunate, but oh well, we'll roll with it. I don't want to refresh it and end up messing up anything. But proportions is really, it's kind of difficult. I mean, it's, there's a few different methods and stuff. I try to start out using straight lines and I kind of figure out the top and bottom of my subject. And then I just figure out the, the sides. Um, you know, these are the things that I'm gonna move. You know, I'm gonna move this line or move this line. I wanna keep the bottom pretty much around this area and the top of the ears of the rhino like up here so now I have this measurement now I need to figure out what the width is so I can do like comparative comparative measuring to figure that out give me an idea believe it or not it's almost a square literally almost a square so if I take this and rotate it I'm actually pretty close. So if the horn, the edge of the horn, end of the horn was out here, that's pretty much what it should be. Because um, from here to here is a square, and it's a little bit larger than a square. So I'm pretty much dead on with what I was thinking, with my judgment. And it just takes time to get that, that kind of uh, muscle down. I'm not always, I don't always get it right, as you guys have seen in past <laughs> live streams and stuff sometimes it's very challenging for me like that raccoon that I drew a few weeks ago a few days ago I mean it's pretty challenging but uh, thanks for tuning in everybody even if you have to go no problem watch the replay later on appreciate you stopping by of course uh, maybe I'll put one of his 
feet in here. Not sure if I want to do that, but maybe. But uh, I'm going to focus more on the head. And then I just start lining things up. I try to figure out like, okay, is this the right location for the eye? Maybe it needs to go up a little bit higher. Um, I can measure to double check that really quickly. So if the bottom of the ears is about here, yeah, I mean, his eye could probably move up a little bit, although maybe this needs to move up as well. So something like that, and and then now I can line up, okay, where's the horn? Top of this horn kind of lines up right with the eye. So that's kind of how I figure out proportions. I get some measurement correct. I try to use a square, try to just figure it out. And then um, I just start lining things up from, from, from that. It's kind of a very, it's a very intuitive process. It's hard to explain. And now since the eye is here, I can start lining up where the head, I, I see that the head lines up with the eye, but in the photo, it doesn't. In the photo, it's actually out more like this. So it's just figuring that those kind of things out. And I can even, I can even try to measure the width of the head as well. Like, okay, where is, how big is this? head's supposed to be. It's something like how it is, pretty much. Yep, it's kind of. Probably bring it in slightly. So now I know where the top of this horn is for the most part. I can figure out, I can build the other horn off of that one. Man, rhinos are a really crazy animal, dude. Really bizarre. It's like a dinosaur. So yeah, I mean, I basically, for proportions and stuff, just try to do my best and uh, measure things, or I try to measure with my eye first, using my judgment, try to strengthen that muscle, and then I double check it by measuring. It's kind of how I go about it, usually. Unless I get really frustrated, I'll just start measuring first, and then I'll just draw what I measured to save time, if I've already spent a lot of time messing with it. Um, but yeah, I just do my best and then I just correct anything that's off. If it's wrong, I try to correct it as best I can. What are you drawing? Did someone really ask, what am I drawing? <laughs> like, dude, there's a title on the video. I'm drawing a rhino, a rhinoceros head. Oh man, I gotta sneeze. I don't wanna sneeze. Oh, okay. We're good, we're good. 
Oh man, it's a beautiful day here finally. The weather is amazing. I went for a drive earlier. It's just beautiful. Beautiful day. Loving it. So I'm just figuring out some of the shadow shapes here. Maybe it's a little too early to be doing that because I still need to figure out the rest of this kind of shadow shape here so the horn is the, the tricky part here because There's nothing to really reference for the most part of how far it goes out and what the angle is. I know it comes up above this horn, so up here somewhere. And as far as the angle, I just kind of have to guesstimate it and just kind of kind of go with it and get it as close as I can. Just get it to look natural. Something like that, maybe. So I, I picked this photo because it has some nice shadowing, you know, real small bit of shadowing. I'm going to have most of the rhino just be the tone of the paper, and then I think I'm going to do a white background. Really going to make this pop, especially with the dark shadows. So it should be pretty cool. should be pretty cool, I think. We'll have some grass here in front of him as well. So... Yeah, I really tried to plan this one in my mind ahead of time. I try to do that with a lot of my work, like whether it's watercolor or drawing or anything. I try to plan, try to think ahead, like how am I going to plan, or um, you know, what's the process going to be? Plan out the process ahead of time. And try to picture it in my mind. I think that's an important step in creating any kind of art, and people don't really think about that. But it's kind of necessary. You got to have some kind of vision or plan of how you think it might go. So that was something simple. I just thought about like, okay, the shadows. I'm gonna shade in those and some of the lines on the face that are really prominent. And then, uh, even though he's in in light, I want the tone of the paper to be the light. And then the white, a white background will really pop him out. So, should be pretty cool, man. Should be pretty cool. Uh, do we have any, have any questions here? Anything going on? Thank you so much for uploading such videos. I've learned a lot from you. No problem. Which pencil am I using now? Uh, I don't even know where I got this. This isn't this isn't any particular pencil. This is just an HB. It's actually a number two pencil. Look at that. It's an HB pencil. Um, but I'm really not sure where I got it from. But normally, for something like this, I would use like an HB or a B pencil. Um, you know, from your set of drawing pencils that you have. It doesn't really matter. Because I'm going to do this in pen and ink anyway, so I'm just using a light, kind of somewhat light pencil. That doesn't get very dark. So you could use, you could use an H or something or whatever the case may be. This foot looks so small. Okay. Um, 
I don't even know if I'm gonna end up drawing the feet in here in pin. But I feel like it kind of needs it, otherwise it's just like a floating head. So we'll add just a little bit like that. Or I will just add a little bit like that. I want some shadowing here. Pretty cool. Is that eye too small, maybe? He looks quite sad in this photo, to be honest. Mine looks a little angry, but his photo looks like a sad rhino. <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird. I think it's looking pretty good. I think the eye might be in the wrong spot or something, or maybe, yeah, I don't know. But I'm I'm actually okay with it. It's not too bad. It's not perfect, but nothing ever is, you know. Once I once I get this thing inked up and drawn up, and then uh, once you see the drawing by itself, away from the photo reference, it's not. It's gonna look correct. It's not gonna look incorrect. You know, most people that look at your art or your drawings, they're not going to see your reference with the actual art. And it'll look fine. You know, I think people stress about that too much, that it has to be perfect, has to, everything has to be exactly perfect, but it's not the case. It's really not the case at all. Just got to relax and enjoy the process. All right, um, I think that I think I'm good with this. I think I can. I have enough information here. I can start inking this thing up. Hello, how's it going? How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's evening's going well, or morning, or night, or whatever day, wherever you are. And we got people from all over the world here watching. It's pretty cool, man. Never really thought anything like this would ever happen, but it's pretty interesting. Yeah, the only thing that concerns me is this eye, but uh, that's all right. It's going to be fine. It's going to look fine. Actually, I'm going to lighten up the sketch like I always do or try to remember to do. So I just roll up the kneaded eraser like this and then slightly roll it over the drawing. And then uh, it kind of creates a ghostly pencil image. Hi from Colombia. That's cool, man. How is it in Colombia? It's got to be pretty interesting. Colombia. Nevada. All right, cool, man. Wow, Turkey, that's different. That's pretty far <laughs> from California or from America. It'd be cool to go to Turkey one day, I think. I mean, right now it'd be cool to go anywhere because I'm just, I, I had a trip planned for April and never happened. So I'm kind of bummed out, man. I'm, I'm itching to go somewhere. 
Wow, somebody from Iraq. That's cool. Kashmir, India, Mexico. Man, it's crazy. It's really cool. People all over, man. Art uniting everyone. It's pretty cool, man. Pennsylvania. It's cool to see the diverse group of people here, man. Brazil. <laughs> well, this pen is already... So when did I get this pen, guys? For the people who've been following me for a while, this Prismacolor. I got it like a week or two ago. It's already like... I can't even draw with it anymore. It's very... Uh, it's not giving me any lines when I hold it at an angle. I have to like hold it literally straight up and down. Like who draws like that? It's very difficult for me to draw straight up and down. I'm really annoyed with these fine liners. Um, yeah. St. Louis, Missouri, Illinois, Minnesota. If you want to come to Turkey, I will help you, but not now, you know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't even think I can leave the country, but. Yeah, cool, man. I'd, lo I'd love to come to Turkey one day for sure. Do some painting and s sketching and stuff. Be super cool, man. I have many places I want to go. I just really need to get out of my day job and uh, <laughs> start making a living doing what I love doing. And that's what I'm working on, trying to do. So I can be more free I want to be free, man. Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm gonna switch the pin here because th this is too annoying. I have trouble with these too, the Pigma Microns. I have trouble at the, that's the reason I I tried this Prismacolor because I have the same problem with this one, but this one's brand new and I have like six of these to use. So or this one should be brand new. And when they're new, I can hold them at an angle, like a 45 degree, like I would normally write, and they're fine. But after like a week or two, they stop working. So it's really amazing. Actually, I'm a woman. Oh, okay. No worries. <laughs> I just say man as like a, you know, it's like a general thing. But I really appreciate it. Appreciate the offer. What is your day job? I am a graphic designer. I do graphic design for like a healthcare management company. Very kind of a small business. I mean, I'm lucky that I, I get a, you know, I'm able to have a salary and everything and I'm really grateful for that, but uh, it doesn't give me the freedom anymore that I used to have. You know, the last five years I worked from home a lot, and then this year recently they started making me come to an office every day. And uh, I don't want to complain, but it's kind of, it's just killing my soul, you know? Kind of kills my soul. Zoom this out a little bit just so we get more of a So I'm just trying to put some confident lines down here. Man, this this number 5 seems really th thin. 
I'm gonna try I'm gonna try a different new one, see what this feels like. I don't remember them feeling this like thin. Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. Fine. Stick with it, we'll stick with it. I just got used to that Prisma color so much, and now that I'm back using this Pigma Micron, it's just a different feel. Someone says, I'm surprised you're finally doing live streams more often. Yeah, I am too, actually. Um, ever since I got this camera that allows me to like film and, and make art at the same time, like it makes more sense to do live streams. I've been doing them like four or five times a week recently, and uh, I never used to do them this much. I used to just have like chat live streams every once in a while where I would just chat with people. And I couldn't really like paint or draw. I tried to in the past, but they never came out that well, that great. But now, man, I really love what I'm able to do with this camera, so it's really been a game changer. So I'm definitely trying to do these much more nowadays, and uh, people seem to be loving them, man, so it's cool. Really appreciate everybody tuning in. It's a lot of fun doing these and I get a lot of practice, you know. I normally, I probably wouldn't draw this much to be honest <laughs> or even paint this much. I haven't been this year that much. I did at the beginning of the year and then I kind of fell off and doing these live stream is really getting me back on track with being consistent and practicing. And have you ever drawn with pan pastels? Yes, I have. Uh, I'd, actually, I have some. Or I used to anyway. I've been getting I get, I've been getting rid of a lot of art supplies that I just don't need or don't want around anymore. Um, yeah, they're pretty cool. I, I used them like at the beginning of a of an oil painting, but otherwise I don't really know how to use them or anything. <laughs> um, do you sell your drawing art? Yes, actually, this is a great time to say you can check out my uh, website, shaferfineart.com. I have oil paintings on there for sale, small oil paintings, some a little bit larger as well, and I have some watercolors for sale currently. And um, I plan on putting these drawings up, uh, these sketches up pretty soon here, pretty soon in the next few days. So definitely check out my website. I have other stuff on there as well, blog posts for about art and um, stuff like that. Blog posts, I got, I'm going to be adding a lot more tutorials for sale, so you're going to support me that way. Um, yeah, I'm going to be updating my website a little bit, really adding more to it and, and trying to get that, get that going. And so yeah, definitely check that out for sure if you're interested. Of course. All right, this is it's coming out pretty well, I think. I'm definitely gonna have to thicken up some of the line work here um, as this thing progresses. Just try to figure out where to do that. Of 
Okay, what am I missing here? Alright, let's go to the leg a bit. So I'm trying to just be a little bit more loose with the legs and stuff. Like I, I don't want much attention back on these legs. I may not even shade them that much. We'll just wait and see how this progresses. I want more of the focus to be right around the head, obviously. Man, I love the feel of a new pin. Feels really good. Definitely feels really good. Okay. Uh, see where we are there. Okay. It's looking all right. I think. I think we start adding in some of the shading. Let's try to bring it. Try to get some value going here. The shading should not take very long at all on this one. I think I'm gonna go. All vertical lines on this. Haven't done that in a while, I know. But I think uh, I think that's what I'm gonna go for. Let's just go for like all vertical lines. It's always fun to do. And since there's very little shading here, I think uh, it's just a cool way to do it. Zoom this in for you guys here. So, going all vertical. I'm just gonna let the value kind of determine the form, texture, and stuff like that. But a lot of the shadows in this photograph are very dark. So there's a lot of harsh light. So I can either, I can go that dark if I want or I can go a little lighter. I can always darken it more. So let's keep it a little lighter to start out with. Cool. Sorry folks, just got an email. Got distracted. So just trying to suggest a little bit of the texture there. Somebody says, I'm having a bad art block. Yeah, that's, um, that's never fun. You know, sometimes you just gotta just take a break, just go with it, take a break and uh, you'll get inspired eventually. There's been times in the past where I thought I was gonna quit painting altogether. I did that like twice. I thought like, all right, I'm done with painting. I'm not gonna do it anymore. And uh, they weren't like the happiest times, of course, but you know, I just focused my life on other things at the time, and then I, eventually I got back into it. But I haven't done that in a few, it's been a few years since I've done that. I think I got it kind of figured out now, you know, like how to not get burnt out and not get depressed about <laughs> my life and where I'm at with things, you know, just try to be patient and yeah. All 
I would always compare myself to other artists, you know, like, man, you know, how are they so successful? Like, and I'm not at all. And, you know, it's just, it's not a good habit to get into. You know, everybody has their own journey, different place that they're at. And I can't worry too much about, oh, sorry guys, can't even see what I'm doing. So I'm just trying to make my way down the down the head here a bit. Suggesting some of the stronger wrinkles and stuff. What a crazy animal, man. It's weird how armored up they are, you know, like their skin, they got these horns, but then they're, they're not carnivorous, you know, <laughs> like they're peaceful animals for the most part. It's very weird. I think I need to adjust the shape of the shadow slightly. There we go. <clears throat> <laughs> getting boss <laughs> Bob Ross vibes from me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've gotten that a lot. I used to watch him years ago. But yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty chill dude, you know. I'm pretty, uh, pretty chilled out. People always say that about me. Did I miss any, uh, I think I missed some questions here. Give me one second, guys. Do you plan on drawing faces or people? I mean, pen and ink or watercolor? Yeah, I do actually. I was thinking, I've been thinking of doing a, a pen and ink self-portrait and then, and then trying to do the same uh, self-portrait and watercolor. So the pen and ink would kind of be like, you know, just kind of studying it before I jump into a painting of it. So I may do that this weekend, to be honest. Um, just something when I have a little more time, because it, it might take a little bit longer for me to draw something like that and to paint it. And I, I haven't really painted portraits like that before, so definitely would be a challenge, and I can't promise that I'd be good at it. Uh, it would be a new experience for me, mostly. I mean, I did a... I did a portrait in watercolor about 10 years ago, so I definitely don't have much practice with that, but I'm definitely willing to try that out um, and explore that a bit for sure. Yeah, you guys just got to be patient with me and hopefully, yeah, maybe this, this weekend for sure. I think that might be the plan if I end up doing some live streams this weekend. I know this past weekend I didn't really do any live streams. I kind of took a break, but, um, yeah, I'll try to I'll try to be better about it this week. Um, what inspired you to make these videos? Um, you mean like all my videos on YouTube? The way I got onto YouTube years ago is 2013, I believe, is when I first got onto YouTube. I was doing acrylic painting and I was posting like really short, like 20 second 
time-lapse videos of my paintings, just like photograph time-lapses, not even video, of me doing process of my paintings. And somebody said, you should post these on YouTube. Somebody on my Facebook page. And I was like, oh, okay, that would be cool. Because I watched YouTube. I watched people on YouTube. I just never made any content before. One thing led to another. I started making videos and then people started asking me questions like, how do you paint this? How do you do that? How did you do this? And then uh, I started answering their questions in videos. And it just went on from there, you know, just kind of like built up over time. Like I just started helping people when I could. And then I just started sharing my journey. And then I realized, you know, I need to just I want to document my whole journey of like art and that's kind of what I've been doing for the last few years is just kind of documenting my whole art journey from acrylics to oils to now watercolor, pen and ink, like plein air vlogs around the world. I've been international now, traveling and stuff. So I mean I've just done a lot of cool stuff and it's cool to look back on. So for me, I try to think ahead and I think, you know what, man, in like five or 10 years, it's going to be really cool to see some of these travel videos, places that I've gone, things that I used to paint, some of the dumb things I've said, you know, like, it's just going to be cool to look back on, I think. And yeah, that's kind of what my whole thought process is with this YouTube channel. It's just kind of something cool to look back on one day and see my whole like, you know, 10 year journey. I mean, so far since 2013, so I mean, it's been like six or seven year journey already that you can go back and just watch. You know, I had long hair at some point and then I got a haircut and, you know, there's just so many things that happened in my life, so many changes. I started off in Delaware and then I moved to California. Who knows where I'm gonna end up next in life, you know? So, I mean, it's it's, it's a wild ride, man. Life is a wild ride. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I was really hoping uh, this April, if this whole coronavirus thing didn't happen, I was planning, I was really planning a two-week trip in Italy. Uh, that didn't happen, of course, and now Italy is like, yeah, done for. But, um... I was going to spend a week in Rome and then a week in Naples and I was just going to like film everything, document everything and, and paint, you know, sketch as much as I could, painting watercolor sketches and vlog everything. It was going to be really cool documenting it and uh, just relaxing and having fun, but that didn't happen. So I'll have to figure something else out, hopefully next year, maybe the end of this year, if we if they open up international travel again but probably next year I guess which really sucks man anyway I'm just rambling so is there anything else uh, what is your favorite thing to draw I don't really have a favorite thing to draw uh, I mean I guess an animals are pretty cool it's been fun drawing all these animals I don't really know. That's the thing. I don't I don't really draw a whole lot or I didn't used to draw a whole lot. I was really focused on painting. Painting was really what I liked to do. And I really liked painting landscapes, but when it came to drawing, I never really drew landscapes. Like landscapes weren't a thing that I drew. Uh they were much easier to paint. I could paint them much quicker than I could draw them. So but then once I started drawing, I started like drawing animals like this. And uh, it's kind of just, it's kind of just what I've been doing lately. Uh, okay, I'm not sure how to <laughs> shade the legs. It's gonna take forever if I try to do that. I may not do them as dark. I'm just gonna, we'll just give them some kind of value to start off with. Maybe I'll go darker. 
any other things here? How's everybody doing? Okay, I'm not gonna read that. Uh, how did you perfect your shading? Well, I, I don't know that I perfected anything. Um, I don't think anything's perfect. There's different ways to look at life. You could say that nothing is perfect, or you could say that everything's perfect. Like everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. Like everything happens for a reason or whatever, and everything is perfect. Or you could say that nothing's perfect because nothing can ever be perfect. But the only way to get good at something is to practice. That's what I do. I just draw more. I just shade more and practice. You know, it's like, how do you get smarter? You study more. You learn more things. How do you build muscles? Well, you go to the gym more. You know, you work out. You put effort in. So I just put effort into shading. And you know, it's really s as simple as that. I think people really overthink everything. You gotta start doing and st stop thinking and just start doing. Uh, shading is my biggest challenge. Any suggestions, huh? There you go. I just answered that pretty much. Just start doing it more and start learning from your mistakes. Like why isn't your shading good? So start looking at shading. Look at artists that you think their shading is good. Compare it to yours a little bit and and side by side and see what what's the difference like why is there so much better like what kind of things are they doing do you need more contrast is is the way you're shading wrong you know like or do you have the right kind of drawing pencils um you know all these kind of different things to figure out you know does it look like the subject that you want it to look like you gotta really start dissecting your work and figuring out why it isn't, what don't you like about it? Like start critiquing it and maybe get advice from other artists out there if you can to help you. Because sometimes other people can see things more clearly than you can, especially when you've been looking at it forever. Like some of you guys could probably see a lot of like things wrong with this drawing that maybe I can't see because I've just been staring at it for so long, but you guys are able to see the whole overall picture of it, you know? It's like when you're helping other people with their problems in life too, like, it's easy when you're outside of the problem to see what, how to fix it. But when you're stuck in the problem, it's hard to see it from a clear perspective, you know? Don't mean to get like philosophical or anything, but a little late for that, I guess. Uh, wow, man, the eye looks pretty cool. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, I think it came out pretty well. You seem like a cool guy. Hope you have a nice life, peace. Okay, I mean, I guess you're never coming back. I don't, I don't know what that means, have a nice life. I hope you have a nice life too, man. I think, yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I just want to make it look smoother, really. Okay, so you want your shading to look smoother. Well, you could use like a blending stump, which is like a really tight rolled up sheet of paper. If you just search like blending stumps. Um, if you're talking about with pencil, like shading with pencil, then you could always like use like a tissue or a blending stump and really like... Uh, blend it out like that but you can make it look smooth you can make it look smooth just with pencil too it just takes a lot longer I should show you guys uh, a drawing that I did where I did not smudge or smooth any of the shading and I only used pencil and it took drawing took me a few hours I should go get it just to show you guys what's possible. Um, if anybody wants to see that, it's in my closet. It only take me a 10 seconds to go grab it. I think that's where it is. Um, I use like a very old method of drawing called uh, Barg, Barg, Barg drawing. And it's like a, you study another drawing 
and um, but I should, I should, yeah, I should show you guys if anyone's interested in seeing that. Just let me know. I'll go grab it real quick. Take a little break here. Maybe reassess my drawing. See where I need some thicker lines. I like the thicker line work here. Um. Let's see that pencil drawing. Hey, I really need to get off the fence and just do it. I watch too many videos and not enough practicing. Exactly, man. Exactly. That's. I think that's a lot of people's problem is they watch other people create art, but then they don't create art themselves. You know, you get stuck into that mode. I mean, I, I've done that as well, but I really don't watch any artists on YouTube at all, really. Um, did you use any books to learn how to draw? Not really. You know, I've just been drawing since I was a kid. And people always ask me, like, what book do you recommend for drawing? And I really don't have an answer. Um, there's one book I really like for drawing portraits. I can't remember it right now, but it's kind of like classical method of drawing portraits or something. It's by an Asian guy, I believe. It's really, really great method for drawing portraits. I should get the name of that book. I have it on, like, Kindle or something on my Kindle. But a uh, really great book for drawing portraits. You know, it's it's basically a very simple method. You start out with straight lines, the envelope of the whole subject, and then you just keep breaking everything down with straight lines, and then you just build off of that. Um, but he explains things very well. But really great book. Uh, classical methods for mastering portraits or something like that. Yeah, I wish I could. I wish I could. Un I remembered the title. Yeah, I think it's looking pretty cool. Uh, I think once I use white in the background, just a little bit behind the head, boom, this thing's gonna pop. So maybe I should try doing that right now. Actually, I need to give him a shadow underneath first. So that's what's really gonna bring this together. So we'll give a little bit of a shadow. And it's crazy, all the shadowing you see is vertical lines, like. <laughs> I mean, I did some of the texture of his skin in curved lines, but it's all just vertical lines when you you look at it. You know, that's kind of the the illusion. You know, I'm just creating an illusion. Art is a lie. You know what I mean? Zoom this out a little bit more, and then we'll just draw in some of the grass here, maybe fade that out. So see that right there? It's probably very subtle. Let me try to make a little bit more. So just by simply changing the amount of spacing here, you can get a gradient. Um, and that's how you get different shades, different values, you know, you, you create this, <laughs> you know, just by changing up the spacing. And you can do that with pencil too, same thing. So if you want something lighter, you just create more space between each line. It's very simple stuff, you know. So maybe after I do the shadow, I'll go get that pencil drawing. Um, and I uh, see a few people interested in seeing this pencil drawing. It's basically like, uh, it's a drawing of, actually, I'll just show it to you guys because it's going to take me forever to explain it. Wow, we got 45 people on right now. That's pretty cool, man. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Really appreciate it. Definitely helps support my channel and what I do. And uh, hopefully I can keep creating cool content like this and just helpful content overall. We can draw some grass in here too. Might as well, because just give a little bit of environment. 
to where he where he is. And for grass, you know, you just kind of do random lines, you know, and just try to become the grass, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, okay, don't want to go overboard with it, but we'll have a little bit of grass there. Can't even really see it anyway, so I might have to just like make a few more clumps here and there, just clumps of grass. <clears throat> so just draw them in different directions. There we go. Really nice. It looks really nice. What do you guys think? <clears throat> do you ever want to collaborate with other artists for a YouTube video. Yeah, for sure. I've, I've thought about that. I've actually made a list of people that I probably would want to collaborate with. Um, I've collaborated in the past doing uh, painting challenges. If you go on my channel and search, if you go to my channel page and you search my videos and you type in painting challenge, I ended up doing like three or four painting challenges, me and like three other artists. And we all would paint, like we did like a monthly challenge where we all painted the same subject. And, um, we all made our own videos. So, it, it, I mean, we ended up getting a lot of views with those. It was pretty popular. I don't know why we ever stopped doing them, but it was pretty fun. It was pretty cool. I'd love to do something like that again, um, for sure. But I think it just got too stressful for all of us, <laughs> ironically, but now it's something I could really do. Is there a time when you got aggravated with a piece of art you're working on and did you throw it away or come back to it later? Um, there's definitely times where I've just thrown stuff away. I just threw away a bunch of paintings this morning, uh, old paintings that weren't that great. Just a whole stack, probably like 20 or 30 small paintings. I just went through all my small paintings, just threw away all the bad ones. Um, I still have about a hundred and something in the room of, of good ones. I want to start doing giveaways as well, monthly giveaways. Uh, that would be pretty cool. I think you guys might enjoy that as well. I might do that on my Facebook page, so definitely want to check that out. I might do it on YouTube as well. Haven't decided yet, but um, but yeah, I've definitely gotten aggravated with stuff and thrown it away, and there's definitely times where I just take a break, come back to it later for sure. I do that all the time. Sometimes you do have to take a break. I'm actually, I'm pretty excited with how this one's coming out. This one's uh, really nice, man. Really nice. I like this. I don't want to get too detailed with all the values here, but just trying to... I need to simplify a bit. I think it's pretty simplified. Uh, maybe just a little more shadowing on the nose area and stuff. Um, I'm gonna go get that drawing real quick. Uh, yeah, so when I come back, we'll do the white pen. I'm gonna go grab the drawing real quick, guys. Don't go anywhere, it's gonna take me like 10 to 15 seconds. But there's people that wanted to see that pencil drawing. It's pretty interesting. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully I'm remembering it right, correctly, and that it's actually a good drawing, but um, Give me one second, talk amongst yourselves. Don't talk about me while I'm gone. Okay, there's actually, there's actually three drawings here. Two that are finished, so this is one of them. Now, I did not smudge, I did not smear, I did not do any of that for this drawing, just so you guys know. And look, I didn't even go very dark either. Um, let's try to get the... I think the darkest I used was a 3B 
pencil. Um, so I'm trying to remember the pencils I used. I think I used an HB, a B, and like a 3B or something like that. Uh, but if you look at the shading, it's quite smooth. You can see how soft it looks. And I didn't, I didn't smear or smudge. I just used a pencil, varying the pressure, very lightly, very sharp pencil. And um, yeah, that's the kind of effects you can get if you take your time and uh, use a really sharp pencil. And here's another one as well I did. Same, same thing here, guys. Same thing. There's no, I did not use a blending stump. I didn't smear or smudge anything. Just used straight pencil. You can see some of the lines there. Let me try to focus this if it can. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to show you some of the pencil texture there. You can kind of see, but uh, yeah, it's all just, it's all just taking your time and and uh, really getting those transitions and stuff. That's what's gonna make it look realistic. And the, I mean, these things, this probably took me six to eight hours, and this probably took me, I don't know, maybe a little bit less or something. What really took, what really took me a long time to do this one was just getting the proportions and blocking it in. You know, I blocked everything in with straight lines. That took me probably about an hour or two hours just to get the correct placement of, of it. And then the shading, um, you know, didn't take that long. Um, and then this is one I started doing in charcoal, but I didn't finish it. Um, but you can see I started getting some good... Uh, textures and stuff. I think I did smear on this one. I think I did smudge a little bit. Uh, I was trying a different method uh, with this charcoal compared to the... I really like graphite a lot better than charcoal. It's just easier to work with. Um, so, for anyone that just got here, yeah, I, I was talking about... somebody was asking about shading earlier. And I wanted to show uh, some pencil drawings that I did that kind of could could show some of the uh, uh, show shading method that you don't have to smear or smudge. It just takes a lot of time. Um, but this is the Rhino. Um, did I do those from photos? Yeah, actually, I printed them out. They're called here. I'll, I'll type in the chat what they're called. They're called Barg plates. So. Method of drawing. So in the in the chat, I posted Barg plates, Barg method of drawing. If you kind of search that on YouTube or online, you'll see those kind of plates out there. That in it's something from like I think the 1800s or 1900 or yeah, late 1800s maybe. I believe uh, I believe Van Gogh actually. Believe it or not. For people that know Van Gogh's work and it, they think it doesn't look very realistic, like his paintings and stuff, he actually did, from what I've read, he did that Barg method of drawing, the whole school, like drawing all those different plates. It said online, it said he did that method three times. So he was very good at drawing. Van Gogh was very good at drawing. He knew what he was doing. Uh, but with his painting, it's just a different, you know, he just went with a different style. So. Uh, yeah, pretty interesting. But if you if you Google that Barg Barg drawing, you know there's a Charles Barg uh, book out there that kind of details the method of it and stuff. I don't know that I actually did it the right way, but I like how the drawings came out, so that's all that matters to me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try to use a white pen here. Hopefully this white pen works. Okay. So this is what's gonna make the rhino pop. As you can see already, boom, rhino, it gives the rhino context. So, 
So we'll just do a nice small white background just to give it one more little value here. So yeah, I hope, hope you guys enjoyed seeing those uh, pencil drawings. <laughs> Too lazy to draw, yeah. I know the feeling though, man. I've, I've been a lot, I've been really lazy lately actually. Um, trying to get my business and stuff back on track and I've been really lazy with it lately, so. I think it was yesterday. Yesterday I actually finally woke up early for once in my life. You know, like before 7 a.m. So I was happy about that. Um, today I wasn't that lucky, but it's all right. Just try to get back on the tracks whenever you can, man. Put the train back on the tracks and uh, don't worry about the wasted time, the lost time. You just do what you can. So what do you guys think of this white background? Looks all right, looks decent, pretty cool. There we go, make the rhino pop a little bit, it's cool. I'm pretty happy with it. All right, we're getting a lot of questions today, man. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Hopefully I can answer all these, hopefully. I want to keep drawing as well as I'm answering these. I don't want to waste anyone's time here. Let's see. Uh, after seeing those three drawings, I have the feeling that I should practice more. <laughs> I mean, it just takes time to get to do stuff like that. You know, like I definitely don't always draw that well. You know, it's just stuff takes a lot of time. You know, I think it, something to really try and to think about is to like do a lot of quick sketches. Like try to time yourself, literally put a timer on for 30 minutes or 20 minutes or like whatever seems fast to you, an hour. And try to do a quick drawing and try to make it look as good as you can. Then I recommend also trying to do very long session drawings finished like try to do try to spend a few days on a drawing like three days or like just a few hours like try to try to really take your time on a drawing and really get it as good as you can and finish it and I think having a balance between those of drawing quick and doing long drawings like long detailed not necessarily detailed, but kind of like what I showed you there, like just spending a lot of hours of, of just being very careful and really getting in the zone and really working on it. I think having a mixture between those two methods will really help improve your drawing. That's kind of what it's kind of what I did, kind of what helped me. And uh, it's something I still do as well. You know, sometimes when I do these watercolor paintings in the studio, I take my time on them. But then a lot of times I go outside and I do a watercolor painting in 10 minutes. You know, very s small, quick sketch, just try to capture what's there. And it just helps, it's just strengthening different muscles, you know, being able to use these different methods in different ways and stuff like that. Uh, 
Do you have any fabric drawings with pencil? It's very difficult for me. And can you tell me any suggestions, please? Fabric drawings? Oh, like drawings of fabric. Uh, I don't believe I do. Um, as far as like suggest, as far as suggestions, I mean, ah, uh, like anything that I draw, like when I think about drawing anything, whether it's a rhino or folds or like even folds like this on the skin, it's like, just try to draw what you're seeing, you know, like everything is just draw what you see. To, for me, that's kind of, obviously there's different methods of drawing. You can learn conceptual drawing where you start to understand anatomy and how things actually work and start applying that to your drawings. Like obviously that's one way to do it. But that takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, and a lot of dedication to one particular thing. So if you want to get good at drawing fabric, then you have to draw a lot of fabric and understand like how it reacts and interacts with the environment and light and all this stuff. But if you're just trying to draw some fabric for a drawing, then try to just draw it as, as close as you can to what you're seeing. So basically you need to observe your subject and try to understand it, you know, otherwise you know, if you're, if you're observing it incorrectly, you're not going to be able to draw what you're observing. Where do you get your photos from? Uh, pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com, Pixabay. You can use them commercially if for free. It's pretty cool. Uh, can you remember the drawing? Can you remember the drawing that you were most proud of? Probably one of those I just showed you, honestly. <laughs> Uh, those, I'm really proud of those, uh, the shading and stuff that I did, you know, I'm really happy with how those came out. Other than that, no, I can't really think of anything at the moment anyway, anywhere. So just fixing up some of the line work here. I think I'm getting pretty close to being done. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of him? Looks really cool, man. I'm actually I'm really happy with this one. And uh, it's starting to get late here. I've already spent an hour and 10 minutes on this, so I think that's long enough. Any longer than that, and usually it gets like, just gets too much overworked for these uh, kind of sketches that I do. Let's put some dots over here. Oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Put some textured dots and stuff. It's kind of cool. Something different. All right. Mm hmm. <laughs> Any other questions? Sorry for the question. I'm curious, how old are you? I am, th I am, 21. 21 years old. No, I'm just kidding. I'm 30. <laughs> I'm 30. Um, I will give you $200, Brandon, if you give me your number. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna give it to you right here, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's five five five. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, the shadow on the legs needs to be darker. Well, yeah, I know that, but I don't know that I want to make it darker. I did that intentionally. I want the focus and contrast to be around here and then have it kind of fade out. Um, so I might make it darker on this side towards the head and then have it just be lighter. But yeah, that's, I stated that earlier. I said like, I don't want it to be, I don't want to go as dark as the photo because it would take forever, and uh, I don't really want the con that much contrast over there. Uh, rhinos have such weird bodies. Yeah, rhinos are just weird in general, like super weird. Just a weird animal, man. Weird face, weird head. What would you recommend to put on the background of a drawing? I mean, depends on what it is, you know. I don't even put backgrounds in my drawings, so I don't know that I'm like the best person to ask, <laughs> to be honest. 
but maybe somebody in the chat can give you some ideas or something but for me I have no idea I don't really like backgrounds and stuff I like simple things like this just drawing something simple and having fun with it But yeah, background, I mean, it all depends on the environment. You know, is it a forest? Is it a cityscape? Like, where is it? What's the environment? You got to know, like, what you're drawing. <clears throat> Can y'all please sub to my channel? <laughs> funny for me saying that even though I was reading someone's comment so yeah be sure to like share comment subscribe guys appreciate it your tree painting is really great thanks the one I did yesterday is that what you were referencing yeah I think it came out pretty well, well I'm almost done with this guys so I'm not really sure what else more to do to it um, I'm kind of just doodling here like noodling away and uh, I don't really know what else to add to it I don't think it really needs much more, to be honest. I think I think this is it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing this drawing, this process. Hope you guys like those graphite drawings and stuff, seeing those. Thirty years old, really? You look twenty-one. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm eighteen. So yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm, I just turned thirty this year. Earlier, early, early, early this year. Very early. Sign it. Yeah, exactly. Um, probably not gonna sign it right now, but I usually I'll sign it if when I go to if I if somebody wants to purchase this on my website later on when I put it up. Then I'll I'll sign it then. But yeah, I think yeah, I think this is uh this one's done. Done, dude, done. Really happy with this one. Yeah, I really like that fading out effect. See that? It's really cool looking, man. Uh how do I send you my email? Um Go to my website, check it out, SchaeferFineArt.com, and uh, send me an email. I have a contact page. My email is info at SchaeferFineArt.com. Everybody can check out my art there as well, see what I have up for sale. Check out, I got some uh, blog posts and stuff there as well. But if you want to send me an email, that's the way to do it. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can, for the most part. I try to remember to... I'm I'm very bad at getting back to people with emails. Unfortunately, I'm trying to get better at that. I need to I need to really uh, I need to get back on track with the emails. So hopefully, I will check those very soon and get back on track with everything. I've been quite lazy lately, and I'm I'm trying to uh, cold weather and stuff, man, and cloudy cloudy weather it just makes me really lazy. It it just depresses me. So anyway, uh, I think that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Really cool. Time for closing cat cameo. Yeah, she's not around. She's sleeping, so I'm not sure where it's in the other room. The only thing I can think of adding is like some white on the horns, but I don't want to do that because then it'll distract from, it'll just destroy the whole values that I got going on. So I really like how this came out. I'm definitely interested in purchasing the Arc de Triumph drawing. Uh, that one's actually sold. Uh, the one you see right there, that Arc de Triumph, that one is sold already on my website, unfortunately. I did one the other day um, of the Arc de Triumph that I need to put up probably. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, that one was one of the first ones I sold a few weeks ago. <laughs> that was that was Actually, that was the first watercolor I sold on my website. Uh, that was one of my favorites, man. It was sad to see that one go, but it went to a great artist friend that I have in uh, Vermont, I believe. So I've known him for a few years, and I was really glad that he purchased one of my work, so that was cool. Anyway, thank you guys. Hope you have a good, good day, good evening, good night.
and I'll see you on the next one. Next one's going to be watercolor. Something in watercolor. I'm not sure what. Maybe we'll do some studies of other watercolors, like some sergeant studies or something. That would be cool. Try to learn from some masters. Um, so yeah, maybe that's that's something to try. Study some watercolors from some masters. Try to do some little master studies, if you guys would be interested in seeing that. Okay, yeah, Philip, the other one, one from the other day? Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll try to put that one up this sometime this week. Um, maybe tomorrow, hopefully. I'll put some, put some new, I'll put some new paintings up for sale. So that would be really cool. Um, you're in San Francisco, by the way, too, right? I wouldn't mind, uh, I wouldn't mind hand delivering that one if you're up for that someday. Um, if we get through this whole, like, no contact thing. But, uh, yeah, man, for anybody close to me that wants to purchase some stuff, I wouldn't mind hand delivering it and if uh, you guys are up for that or whatever. But anyway, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Have a good one. Flamingo. Okay, Flamingo. That'll be cool. But uh, anyway, take care of yourself, guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Peace.